Hi y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to show you how to plan a backpacking trip, particularly when going solo. So don't touch that dial. Wait a minute, TVs don't have dials anymore. Um, don't touch that remote or don't close that app. Either way, don't go anywhere. In this video, I want to show you all of the steps that I take to plan a backpacking trip whether I'm going alone or with someone else. If you're not familiar with me, I threw hiked the Appalachian Trail in 2020, and I've hiked and backpacked all of the trails in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. I've done many solo backpacking trips over the years, and most of my through hike on the AT was completely alone. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing to do when planning a backpacking trip is to decide whether you're gonna go alone with a friend, a partner, your pet, or with a group. Before you make any further plans, decide whether you're going alone or with someone else, as this decision can affect other plans you make for your trip, including what trails you hike and when you go. But even if you decide to backpack with others, it is still best to plan your trip as though you're going alone. Many hikers like to share gear such as stoves, tents, and food. But if for some reason that person can't make the trip or they forget to pack a piece of gear, it's always safer for each hiker to bring their own gear, even if they don't end up using it during the trip. Always err on the side of caution and it's best to be prepared for the worst case scenario. The next step is to pick a trail and set a date. When deciding on a trail, consider things like how many days you want to backpack, how many total miles you will hike, what season you'll hike in, and what trail features you're looking for, whether it's hiking to a waterfall, seeing a view, or being immersed in the forest. I will also take into consideration proximity of the trail and how far I want to travel. Next, you're going to want to research and educate yourself on the area. Your research begins when deciding on what trails you want to hike. But even once you've decided, continue to do research to learn everything you can about the area, including the best time of year to hike the trail, any restrictions for trail use, what campsites are available, and where the nearby trail towns are. Educate yourself on what the terrain will be like, whether it is rocky, rooty, has water crossings, or steep ascents and descents. I also check what the typical weather is like, what type of animals are in the area, the elevation gain and loss, and the water sources available, as well as current trail conditions that I need to be aware of. Now it's time to plan your route. Once you've done your research and picked a trail, now it's time to plan your route. Some trails will only have one route available, so this step may already be decided when picking a trail. But many parks have multiple access points, so you may choose between doing a point to point, an out and back, or a loop hike. You'll also want to estimate the miles you plan to do per day based off your pace and hours of daylight available, or whether you're okay with hiking in the dark. I usually see what campsites are available and plan my route and mileage based off this, unless the area has open stealth camping along the trail. It's time for navigation prep. Once your route is established, purchase any park or camping permits needed for the trip and be sure to download, purchase, or print a trail map. Also, you will want to download an offline digital map through a trail hiking app such as Far Out Guides, All Trails, or Gaia. There are many hiking apps available and I've included a list in the video description. Also, make sure to have a compass along with the printed map and be sure to know how to use it prior to your trip. REI offers classes on learning how to use a compass or you can research the internet or social media to find a class near you. Now you're going to need to figure out your transportation and accommodations. The next step when planning is to figure out whether you'll need a shuttle service for your backpacking trip. It's always good to have phone numbers of shuttle services available on your phone in case you needed to be picked up somewhere along the trail. Another good tip is to store the shuttle service numbers in your GPS device like a Garmin inReach so you have that number available even if you don't have cell service. 
You'll also need to decide if you'll be staying in a hotel or hostel the night before or after your hike and where you plan to leave your car. If you're doing a backpacking trip that's too far to drive, then you'll also want to plan for flights and car rental. Who's ready for gear prep? Whether you'll be carrying new gear you've never used or seasoned gear used many times, always test the gear out before leaving for your backpacking trip. You want to make sure all your gear is working, so be sure to check your inflatables for leaks, your sleeping bag and tent for tears, and test your stove, headlamp, and any other gear to make sure everything is working properly. One of my favorite steps, food prep. How much food you take on a trip depends on the number of days and miles you'll be hiking, but it's best to carry around one and a half to two pounds of food per day, which includes breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. I find carrying dehydrated food is much lighter and making your own dehydrated meals is not only pretty easy to do, but is much healthier and cheaper. If you're doing a longer backpacking trip that requires a resupply, then you'll also need to plan whether to pick up a resupply box at a post office, buy resupply in a trail town, or leave resupply in a bear-proof container along the trail. If you plan to cook on the trail, you will also need to be sure you have enough fuel for the trip. You're going to want to check and recheck. Always check the weather prior to your trip, including the day you leave, so you know what to expect and can prepare accordingly. I use a lighter pack gear list where I can check to make sure I have all the gear I need for my trip. I also check my phone apps for any updates prior to leaving, as well as make sure my Garmin inReach is up to date, fully charged and synced. This is important because a satellite communicator cannot work properly if it's not using the latest update. It's time to pack gear and any extras. I recommend not packing your gear until at least a day or two before your trip so you can make sure you don't forget anything and also because you do not want gear like down sleeping bags or jackets packed away for too long. The gear I carry for backpacking depends on the number of days, what time of year, and where I'm going to be hiking. I pack my bag to distribute the weight and make it as comfortable as possible and to prioritize the gear I need to access while hiking. The first item to go in my pack is a trash compactor bag to help keep my gear dry if it rains. The next item I add is my down sleeping quilt which I stuff into a compressed dry bag along with my inflatable pillow and put it in the compactor bag at the bottom of my pack. I then add my inflatable sleeping pad on top of the quilt. If I'm doing a short backpacking trip, I will also take my lightweight hammock and straps to use for relaxing at camp. Next, I add a Dyneema bag which contains my electronics such as my portable battery charger, extra batteries, and charging cables. I then add my clothing bag which contains extras like dry clothes and additional warm layers, hygiene products, and other items I use at camp. My down puffy jacket goes in next which I loosely stuff so that it fills any empty space. I then twist and tightly roll down the compactor bag and shake the pack a little to allow the gear to settle at the bottom of the pack. Then I place my food bag on top which also contains a long handled spoon and a rehydration pouch. Add my folded Tyvek ground sheet, then my tent. And lastly, I add a large collapsible water bladder to use when I need to carry extra water on my hike. I roll down and snap close the pack and add my foam sit pad to the top. The outside front stretch pocket holds my headlamp, a trowel, tent stakes in a Dyneema bag, my first aid kit, toilet paper in a plastic zip bag, my rain jacket and rain pants rolled up, and I attach my camp shoes to the outside straps. The side pockets hold my cook pot, which also contains my stove and fuel canister. And depending on the weather for my trip, I will also carry a hiking umbrella in the side pocket, which I secure with the upper strap. And on the other side pocket, I keep a one liter collapsible water bottle and my water filter. I also attach my Kula pea cloth to one of the side straps. And on the other side strap, I attach my mini Nalgene bottle. 
I also attach my P-Style urination device to one of the straps for easy access while I'm hiking. The hip belt pockets store a knife, lip balm, snacks, sunglasses, and a tripod for my phone. Sometimes I also wear a fanny pack, which I use to store my lip balm, wallet, tripod, and phone, unless I'm wearing leggings which have pockets. On one of the shoulder straps, I attach a sweat rag and another water bottle, which makes for easier access. And on the other side, I attach my garment in reach and some hand sanitizer. Including food and water, my pack typically weighs around 20 to 25 pounds, depending on the time of year and how many days I'm backpacking. I'll include a link to all the gear I carry in the description below. I personally like to bring extras like towels, a change of clothes and shoes for after my hike. Be sure to leave plans with a trusted emergency contact. Before leaving for a trip, I always provide a full itinerary of my route along with the closest ranger station phone number and a printed or digital map with my husband. If he is going with me, then we leave our plans with a family member or close friend who will check in and make sure we return safely. The last step is to have fun. It's easy when planning a trip to get caught up in all the details and sometimes it can feel overwhelming. One of the things I've discovered in my many backpacking trips is that the best laid plans can still go awry. That's why it's important to be well prepared, have a backup plan, and don't have too many expectations. The weather can change abruptly, trails and roads can close, and gear can break. But if you have a good attitude and are well prepared, even when things go wrong, you can still have fun. Here's a tip for when you're at the trailhead. A quick tip for when you get to the trailhead is to put your phone in airplane mode and turn off the background app refresh to help save your phone's battery life. This is also a good time to send a quick message to let your emergency contact know you're starting your hike. So, now that you know how to plan a backpacking trip, how do you get started backpacking alone? Here are some tips to help you get out and solo backpack. Tip number one, car camp alone first. A good way to get used to sleeping alone in the woods, but still feel comforted knowing you could leave quickly is to car camp alone first. This lets you get used to sleeping alone in your tent, but still have quick access to your car if you get too scared. There's a comfort knowing your car is close and this helps ease the transition into backpacking alone. Tip number two, pick a campsite close to your car. Once you've tried car camping, the next step to make the transition to backpacking alone easier is to pick a campsite that's only a mile or two from your car. This way, if you get too scared, you won't have as far to hike to get back to your car. Tip number three, book a campsite where you know others will be. Picking a more popular campground can give you the comfort in knowing other hikers are nearby. Many campgrounds require you to make a reservation online and usually you'll be able to see if others are booked for the same campground. So choose one where others are already booked. This can help make sleeping alone in the woods a little easier. And tip number four, take a friend but camp alone. This option works great if you have a friend who also wants to camp alone but hasn't quite gotten up the courage to try it. Book a trip to the same campsite but hike in separately and set up at different areas of the campsite. This way you'll know you aren't actually alone and have someone nearby, but you'll get a taste of what it's like to camp alone and the transition to backpacking alone will be much easier. And I have even more tips to help you get out and hike alone in a previous video and I'll link that in the description below. All right, that is how I plan my backpacking trips. I hope this video and tips were helpful for you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, I hope that you will consider subscribing. And until the next time, thank you so much for being here and for watching. It really helps my channel to grow. And a very big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Your contribution each month is the reason I can continue to make these videos. So see you all on the next video. Bye.